Hugh Warwick is an ecologist and writer, and he's been studying hedgehogs for over 20 years. He's the author of a number of books, including A Prickly Affair and The Beauty in the Beast, and he blogs about hedgehogs and other wildlife, and you can find him on Twitter under the wonderful name at Hedgehog Hugh. I feel taller and better already. Thank you. Um, I have always been, I suppose, slightly naively surprised at the lack of attention that uh, politicians, most politicians, give to ecology. And um, it was actually Satish, I heard him doing a talk some a couple of years ago, and he brought out the very clear point, ecology and economy, both rooted in the same word, oikos, our home, and we spend most of our time in the news and anywhere else talking about the management of our home, the economy, and very little concentrating on the study of it, on our ecology. And it's something which I think is a really important lesson which many politicians could do well to learn. Because if we're going to protect Britain's wildlife, if we're seriously going to do something about our wildlife, we need to know what we're doing. We need to be basing it on well, we need an evidence base for it. Again, something which is sadly lacking. Certainly at the moment, we have an ecologically illiterate moron running the Department of the Environment. And um, it's... <laughs> I'm, Owen Patterson is, is staggering in his, his lack of capacity to understand even the most rudimentary aspects of our ecosystem. I feel that if there's any effort is going to be made in looking towards protecting wildlife, it has to be done on a scientific basis. It has to be done from the work done by ecologists, and I admit that is slightly special pleading because I'm an ecologist and I need work, but um, my work is quite specialised. I have over the years focused my time studying hedgehogs, and there is, there is a very good reason for that, and that is because I have discovered that the hedgehog is the most important creature on the planet. In fact, between its muddy little paws is held the key to the salvation of humanity. Now, consider that to be a teaser for the talk I'm doing tomorrow at 1.45 in the Reed Room, I think it is. The Reed Room? Anyway, tomorrow at 1.45, I shall tell you more about that. But for now, why should we be worried about hedgehogs? The population of this amazing animal has declined by 37% in the last 10 years. This isn't us at the Hedgehog Society making up numbers. We took all of the data that's available to the best ecological statisticians in the country and said, what can we say? 37% in 10 years. Now, to give you an idea of what that really means, a slight tangent, um, I was asked last summer to give a talk uh, at a zoo in, um, near Cambridge, Shretworth Wildlife Park. I'm a patron of the Wildlife Rescue Centre based, based near there. And, um, and they, they've discovered that if you stick an expert in the tiger's cage at feeding time, you get a great crowd of people. Um, they, they, <laughs> the, the idea is what you do is you tell everybody the feeding time is at 2 o'clock, and at 2 o'clock, expert turns up in cage whilst the uh, keepers remove tiger poo and hide tiger meat. Everybody's there because when the tigers come back in, they do something. Uh, otherwise, they just look miserable. And I was thinking, how can I use this opportunity to draw a link between these two species. What link can I find between the most magnificent and charismatic of wildlife and a big stripy cat? And I was I think, what can we do? And I thought I'd do some research about this. The population of tigers in the wild, we know, is under massive threat. The population is declining at about 3% per year. That's really serious, it's really tragic. And what's really, really tragic is how long it took me to, wait a minute, hedgehogs, 37% in 10 years. Our hedgehogs in Britain are declining at a faster rate than tigers are in the wild. Now, admittedly, there are far fewer tigers. But still, why are we not kicking up the same amount of fuss about hedgehogs as we are about tigers? Well, part of the reason is because it's other people killing tigers. And the real issue is it's us that are killing hedgehogs. I was asked, I mean, I'll go into a little more detail about what it is we need to do to help hedgehogs. I was being interviewed for a TV news thing recently, and the interviewer said, well, what do we do? You've, you've told us we need to have compost heaps and, you know, take up Hedgehog Street as a fantastic project and, you know, connect our gardens. But what seriously do we need to do? And I paused and I thought, so, well, seriously, if you're really serious about it, the only thing you need to do is begin to dismantle industrial economy, uh, capitalism, sorry by beginning to dismantle industrial capitalism. And you could just see the blood drain from the face of the interviewer. <laughs> and 
the real upset of that was that, that, that my, my lovely little bon mot was, was edited out in the final thing. But, I mean, and it's, obviously that's a dramatic and drastic thing to suggest, a bit scary to suggest. But if we were serious about it, that's the way we would be going. And why should we be caring about that? Why should we really care about hedgehogs? Well, I argue that they're the most important creature on the planet, and they are. If we can base that around the work. Um, Stephen Jay Gould, an American biologist, he wrote, uh, he wrote tons and tons and tons of stuff, but one phrase stuck out. He said, we will not fight to save what we do not love. And I, I'm tempted to actually get that tattooed around my wrist or something. I think it's one of the most important phrases. Everybody engaged in the environmental movement needs to take that phrase and hold it dear. We will not fight to save what we do not love. You need to make a commitment. You actually need to get beyond liking, appreciating, oh, I'm really fond of. We need to get a little bit beyond watching David Attenborough's beautiful programs of a wildlife removed from any of the threats, trials, and tribulations of the real world. We need to actually change our perspective and begin to look, begin to empathize, begin to put ourselves in the shoe of, shoes of other wildlife. And the reason why the hedgehog is so important is because in the end, you know, all the wildlife groups, they know that we need to fall in love. We need, they know they need to do that. But they're stuck in a mindset that we can only do this with the charismatic megafauna, the elephants and the tigers and the whales and the dolphins. And it was a while ago when I was nose to nose with Nigel on a Devon lane, uh, Nigel being one of my hedgehogs, um, it dawned on me that it's, I'm as likely to get nose to nose with Angelina Jolie as I am with a humpback whale. And that by relying on these charismatic megafauna, it's a bit like relying on the pictures in Heat magazine and Hello magazine to better understand how to form human relationships. You know, these things, it's not the way it's going to go. They're all endangered and unobtainable, both the humans and the animals. <laughs> and in the end, in the end, we're going to fall in love with the girl or the boy next door. It's not going to be with some A-lister, not unless you want to actually have a life. And you could end up finding those true close relationships with the people you have connections with. And the hedgehog is, is the animal equivalent of the boy or the girl next door. It's the animal you actually have a chance to get close to. It's all very well. I mean, you can throw bread at the ducks in the park and put nuts out for your birds in the garden. You're not going to get that close to them. But with a hedgehog, because they don't have a fight or flight response, because when they're concerned, they'll roll up in a ball, you can get close to them. And if you're quiet and you lower yourself down to their level, you can get nose to nose with the hedgehog. And you can look inside their beady little eyes and begin to see that this is a genuinely sentient, wonderful mammal. It's not that different to us. And once you've done that, once you've shifted your perspective and gotten nose to nose with it, you are in a position of beginning to truly see what threats we have put in the face of the hedgehog and the things you can begin to do. So tomorrow I will talk extensively about what we can do to help hedgehogs. And come to my stall in the main hall. I'll be there all tomorrow as well. Ask me more questions. But the take-home message for this is, Go get nose to nose with a hedgehog, look into its little eyes, and take a risk of falling in love. Thank you very much. <laughs>